Okay, so I think we are live and uh, let me check if the connection is correct. So today we will do English version of our dental talks and uh, I'm waiting for people to connect because we announced this live broadcast just a day ago. And as I mentioned before, this live broadcast, these dental talks will be in English. So for all Russian speaking friends, for my colleagues, please go back to yesterday because yesterday we launched our live broadcast in Russian language. So if you miss it, you can watch it in record. So good evening, my friends. And uh, first of all, I would like uh, to say congratulations and Merry Christmas to all of you. And I would like to wish you all the best in the new year to be strong, to be healthy, to be wealthy and to stay motivated and to love dentistry more and more and more and to progress in profession and in your daily life routine. So my friends, let me introduce this project because today live broadcast, we will stay with you and uh, this live broadcasting is really dedicated to our uh, program, to our YouTube program, which is BG Dental Cases and today we will define winners. If you, if you follow us, if you follow our um, educational series uh, and case reviews, you know that every single time we, we introduce a contest. Uh, for example, the, the best comment or the best story about your dental workflows and then we give you um, our online masterclass free of charges. Today uh, we will be discussing with you two contests, uh, actually two dental cases, the episode number nine, which was endo-restorative. And if you remember that time we were speaking about MTA um, utilization in, in endodontics and I asked you uh, to share with us uh, your tips and tricks about simplified way to utilize MTA in daily basis. And uh, the best comment we will give a prize, which is online masterclass dedicated to porcelain veneers and class three restoration, okay? Another dental episode is number 10. That was tough one. Uh, it was dedicated to uh, dental fuck ups and I showed you a case with my mistake and that time I asked uh, followers, I asked, I asked my colleagues to share with us your funny stories about your, um, your let's say, your, your daily basis or some interesting and tough stories and mistakes that happened in your life and to share it with, uh, with, uh, with your colleagues. So uh, today we will define the winners. I would like also to mention that uh, everything we do in, in YouTube, especially in recent uh, few months is uh, free of charge continuous dental education okay and uh, we share clinical cases we share information that is a part of big conference and lecture projects and we're sharing this free of charge especially with you and i would like to thank you all because every single time nowadays uh, every single case every single new case we involve our colleagues to contribute in dental education. And if you will read comments to our dental cases, you may find a lot of useful information, which is really amazing thing because nowadays with no limits, with no borders, we can exchange information. We can share our experience, share our, our cases, not, not only from our side, but also, also from your side. So basically you are contributing to the dental education and I would like to thank you all because your comments um, to our cases, your comments to our one minute dental series are really valuable for colleagues because a lot of new information and a lot of new useful practical information people, people actually can use and can utilize. Okay, let me go into the uh, definition of the winners and afterwards we can do live Q&A. You can ask me any single, case, any, any single question about dentistry and we will do some brief uh, answers, questions and answers to the topics that you are really interested 
interested uh, in. Okay, so first of all, the episode number nine of BG Dental Cases, the name was Endo Restorative. And the question was um, to share with people, to share with colleagues, the best way to use MTA in endodontic treatments, okay? And there is an answer, a very, very didactic, very precise and very um, informative answer from our colleague. His name is C. Prush. I don't know which country are you from. If you are now live, say hello to us. So basically, you are the winner. And I would like to read this answer about MTA utilization because the answer is, as I, as I told you, it's like an, it, it is like an instruction. So basically, you can take this answer and you can start using MTA in your daily basis. So the answer was, first, use of calcium hydroxide prior to use of MTA as a canal medic uh, medicament uh, so the MTA can set well. This is the good point because MTA is really is very sensitive to acid um, environment. So calcium hydroxide really decreases the acidity of the root canal and MTA will set in 100% of cases. So calcium hydroxide is the good point. The second point, pack powdered MTA as you demonstrated. During this video, I demonstrated the first portion of MTA is being used as powder. So this trick also um, is useful for uh, for our winner from C Prush. So the point number three, for open apices, you can pack a resorbable membrane material all the way to the working length. It will provide some resistance when you pack the MTA in. I would like to comment this point because it is very useful and important especially when you have uh, a pretty big diameter of the apex and you have um, empty space around. For example, maybe there is a cyst or something similar, like a bone destruction. And in this case, when you use MTA, there is a big risk that MTA will be extruded over the root canal. So you can use a membrane, which is a resorbable collagen uh, membrane that you can you can put and force and push out of the root canal. So this membrane will create a, a matrix from the periodontium to to pack your, your MTA and uh, with no risk of uh, over extrusion. This is a good point. The point number four from his answer. Personally, I prefer to mix the MTA and then uh, choose the amount that I will pack in maintain working length while packing. But in all honesty, it is all estimation. I use the largest good aperture cone that will go to the length as a reference. I will then roll the mixed MTA into a Moog good aperture cone putty of similar width. Then I will cut the desired length of mixed MTA cone and use a plugger to carry that amount and plug it into the, the tooth without exceed, exceeding the working length you could also cut the initial reference gutta percha cone apex and use it as a plugger to after removing the portion that is being taken up by the MTA in the canal. Tried my best to explain, but it's kinda hard to put into the words. So I kinda mix it so that it's more putty-like. And option number five, use an MTA that can be dispensed through special tips like MTA flow or map system. In this case, it's mixed, so that can that uh, it's more flowable and useful. So that is the complete answer. The answer consists of five detailed explained points. So congratulations, dear C. Prash, you are the winner and the prize is online masterclass dedicated porcelain veneer preparation and class three carriers defects. But there is another guy that shared a really good answer as well. And I personally was really satisfied by the information in that comment because it was very useful. It was very practical, very didactic, and also author of the answer uh, also, um, he attached links to his cases and videos. So 
Eslam Ali. Here's uh, the winner, another winner. So actually we have two winners. Instead of one, we will do, we'll have two winners. So you can, you can read their comments, by the way. You, if you will go to our YouTube channel, to the playlists, okay? And there is BG Dental Cases. We are discussing now case number nine. So you can read these comments and you can get a lot of information, not only from our side, but also from, from the colleagues. So congratulations, Dr. Islam Ali, you are with the, uh, another winner. And our administration will, will contact you and will explain how can you get your online masterclasses, um, uh, how can you actually participate in these online masterclasses. So that's perfect. And now let me also let me also uh, define the winners of our dental case number ten. Actually, uh, the winner is uh, the funny story, and the condition was to share with us funny stories that that they happen in your daily, day, not daily actually, in your in your dental life. And the comment that gets more likes will be our winner. And the price is our online masterclass about rubber dam isolation, tips and tricks, basics and advanced techniques. And uh, there was a comment with uh, with more likes. Let me just just find it out. If the comment is from Natalia Maximova uh, in English. So her uh, comment was, once I do a restoration of anterior first incisor after anesthesia, prepping cavity and take a coffer dam, I notice that patient starts move his jaw like he chew something. Fortunately, the clams don't allow him to close the mouth and I finish the restoration. It turns out he was asleep and see a dream. I woke him up a lot of time, but when I polish the restoration without rubbing him, he sleep again and in that time he chew my fingers and even don't wake up. That was tough. I, I, I can even imagine uh, poor fingers. And then the admin said, said to me, your next patient canceled. And my patient said, may we do restoration of first upper molar? Oh yes, answered. I uh, give me a gag poly, said I to my assistant. So that is a funny story when patient was asleep, when was sleeping during the, the treatment and chewing the, the, the fingers of our colleagues. So Natalia, congratulations, you are our winner. And uh, another really good, good, actually, good funny story that was shared by our colleagues. I would like you uh, to, to hear it also. Uh, the funny story is by Vancy24. When I was at dental school in my first year, we were recording the plaque score of one of our patients. So when I, we gave him the tablet to chew, he said it tastes funny. After fully chewing, if we were expecting his teeth to be purple, but when he smiled, there was no stains anywhere. We checked the tablet and it turned out we had given him a mouthwash tablet, not a disclosing one. So it happens. But fortunately, you didn't give him sodium hypochlorite tablet. But <laughs> anyways, that was funny, really funny. Sometimes this funny story happens in... Uh, in our daily routine, but there is another one what I what, that I would like to share with you right now. Uh, it's from Mustafa MTM. Uh, the story is taking out a file and suspect, suspecting uh, did a fracture. Comparing the K file number 10, 25 millimeters with new file that assistant bringing to you, which is K file 27 millimeters long, uh, thinking did file fracture start sweating, then take x-ray and not see anything, then realized it and got breathed back and pushing the assistant. So that is story with happy end when you notice that the file is short, but it's fi the file was compared with the longest one. So basically, fortunately, there was no file fracture like in my case. If you didn't see this case uh, in... Uh, mm, in 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 uh, BG dental cases number ten, there was exactly the case of file fracture that I broke during the uh, endodontic treatment, 
and that was really, really tough. So perfect. Now we have winners. Actually, we have three winners, two winners from uh, BG Dental case number nine and one winner from BG Dental case number 10. By the way, tomorrow uh, there will be episode number 11, the last episode of BG Dental cases for this year. So stay uh, in touch and you will see some useful information about clinical dentistry also. Now I'm ready to answer some of your questions. You can ask me right now some of your questions. And there is one already, the, 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 the question from RAK. Um, the question is, what was your career journey after dental school? How long did it take you? Um, I graduated at, in 2004. And right after graduation, I entered public uh, dental, uh, how to say, dental hospital, let's say like this. So that was governmental dental clinic, okay? And I worked there for three years, for three years. The one year was internship and two more years as a, as a dentist there. And then we opened our dental practice in 2007. And uh, I was suffering a lot during this period of time because governmental clinic equipment was really, really old fashioned and old school. The techniques were old school and I forced myself to work in such conditions, but I invested that time because that period of time I learned a lot from private courses. I went to as much private courses as, as I could afford that time because I was, I have had no sponsorship and everything I earned, I spent to my dental education. This is, this is the, this is the story. And I collected, I, I gained a lot of information and a lot of knowledge. And once we opened our dental, dental office in uh, 2007, it was easier for me to implement this knowledge and uh, to start to do um, high level dentistry like this. But I'm still running, I'm still learning, I'm still improving, I'm still progressing. So this is, the question is how long did it take you? It's still, it's still in progress. Okay, it is still in progress. Perfect. So uh, I would like also to ask you, by the way, uh, please write down in your in comments, which cities are you from? What country and city are you from? Okay, it's really interesting for me to see because now we have 19 people watching us, 20 already. So please write down where are you from? Okay, uh, another question from Diana. Hello, can you give some advice how to make orthodontic extrusion of a canine that is broken on the bone level, but 22 and 24 is with metal ceramic crown? Wow, that is tough. <laughs> you can bond to metal ceramic crown, by the way, if you will use uh, hydrofluoric acid and, uh, and uh, silane. So basically from the occlusal area of premolar and from lingual area of lateral incisor, you can, you can make surface a little bit rough Okay, then you can etch with hydrofluoric acid, then you can apply silane and bond your uh, uh, fiberglass tape. And then you may try to extrude your, your broken canine, but every single time you have to break out the, the, the ligament. This is the, um, I think it will work. I'm not sure, but, but I think it will, it will work like that. Okay, so we have Gustavo from Colombia, from Bogota. Hola, amigo, como estas? I was in Bogota, by the way, two years or three years ago. I gave a course in Bogota, in Bogota and there is a company which is a microvision company in, uh, in Colombia and they organized three or four years ago, I don't remember exactly, uh, they organized hands-on course with microscopes and I was there sharing my experience with the Colombian people. And there was a really nice, there was a really, really nice uh, landscape. Uh, there was a mountain. 
I think the the Montserrat, the the, the name of the, the the mountain, Montserrat. I I was there. The view is super amazing. It's correct, Gustavo. Montserrat. Am I am I right or not? Yeah, Montserrat. Cool. Yeah, that was a good time. Good food, good hospitality, nice people, and very beautiful nature and late landscapes. Really nice. Okay, another question we have. Uh, which composite course do you recommend? Okay, that's a nice question. For sure, I would definitely recommend you to participate in uh, a Didier Dici course in Geneva. He's a top level educator, mentor. So Didier Dici, definitely. He's number one. And also I can, I can recommend you to join our program which is module two. And I can say this is unique course because there is not the same course ever. I can say this because I attended many composite courses and the, our course is, is a pure composite course because we teach direct, we teach indirect, and we teach also semi-direct techniques in one program. So it's really a huge program and it is completely 100% hands-on. So the name is module two. You can find information on our webpage, en.belegrad.com. Okay. Um, Mohamed Mostafa, what's your advice for undergraduate students? What's the aspect to focus on? It's a good point. Read a lot. Read as much as you can. Articles, books, um, train yourself. If you have money, if you have your parents that can support you or your relatives, I would suggest you to go to some, some private courses to get some, some systematized knowledge and some step-by-step -step protocols. And then you can, how to say, you can, you can continue improving your skills by working on, uh, on phantom models and by working on extracted teeth. And then also practical workflows. If you have possibility to, to work with your hands in some clinics, maybe in your friends' clinics, in your parents' clinics, or maybe in governmental hospitals or governmental clinics, the same as I, I did when I was fresh graduated. So this is, the, this is the key. You have to be motivated and you have to read a lot, as much as you can. You have to define what direction is your favorite what is most attractive part of dentistry, like restorative or aesthetics or uh, surgery or endodontics, doesn't matter. You have to understand which, what, which one is more or less your favorite and then get more deeper knowledge in that, uh, in that direction. So this is then advice. Okay, so we have from Bogota, from Lviv, Ukraine, and that's it. That's interesting. We have 18 people watching us live, actually 20 people watching us live, but only two people respond regarding the city and country. You are not very active. I would, I would, I would stop this live broadcast in three minutes if you will not ask me some questions or if you will not write your, your um, country and, uh, and city. Okay, great. What is the best solution for class four composite in uh, deep bite cases? In deep bite cases. What is the best solution for class four? Mm. Okay, uh, if you have deep bite. Okay, correct. So in this case, if you are afraid that your restoration will break, you have to restore the length of the tooth the same as it was before, okay? And you have to, pro to check protrusive and latrotrusive movements to be safe. And in this, this case, if the cavity is not super big, you can use any single uh, direct composite technique, any composite material to restore that defect with, uh, with, a, with a silicon index uh, for example, that will be easier for you to restore palatal wall. If you have no, 
palatal wall, so the tooth is broken. You can do direct mock-up by yourself, just take composite, no etching, no rinsing, no bonding, just restore the, the, the form, check the protrusive and lateral protrusive movements, and then take silicon impression, create matrix, and then go. But keep the length of the tooth in order to not to make interference. So that is the thing. Amsterdam, Netherlands, perfect, nice city, hi, Farzan, where do you learn tooth morphology? Uh, there is a book by Paolo Cano, um, I don't remember exactly the name of the book, my god, I think it's like something like a nature, um, I have to check, but the author is Paolo Cano, okay, just google it, Paolo Cano, morphology and wax up techniques, this is the thing when you can learn um, uh, the replication of the morphology but if you do composite restorations the best way to learn morphology is to take extracted teeth okay with like intact orthodontically extracted let's say or or uh, because of orthodontic treatments or maybe periodontal disease teeth that were extracted and then try to replicate them in composite this is the one of the best way ever to train your skills and to learn layering techniques as well. So work on extracted teeth. You will have a lot of, a lot of useful information, challenging the nature. Correct. Gustavo, very, very clever. Very clever. Gracias. Muchas gracias, Gustavo. So perfect. We have also people from Egypt. Hi, Halawala. Salam alaikum. Perfect. So, do you have implantology course? No, I don't. I don't. I don't do uh, implants by myself. So, no. Kenya. Wow. We have Frank from Kenya. Hello, Frank. Perfect. As does the question is, which is your favorite crown method preparation in posterior teeth? Mm, 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 mm. This is and I don't understand the question. What is the method? It's just simple method to prep for the crown with a chamfer. You may maybe you you if you ask about uh, with finish line or with no finish line verti prep or something like this. I prefer to do chamfer, so I do preparations with a with a chamfer on posterior teeth using direct and indirect vision using my mirror for example you can you can see a lot of cases by the way in our youtube channel where um, we share that information and also on our instagram you can just go there and see some clinical episodes to about crown preparations utilizing mirror or if you would like to to be super upgraded in terms of uh, clinical skills about tooth preparation welcome to our module one Mastering tooth preparations for veneers, crowns, and overlays. 100% hands-on course and you will be super abraded. Um, okay, challenging the nature. Great, great. Any tips for making good retentive provisional restoration? It depends. R-A-K. It depends. If crown, you have to have pretty long tooth abutment and nice ferrule. In that case, your restorations will be retentive. If there is not enough ferrule or you do veneer uh, temporary restorations, personally, I prefer to use spot etching and spot bonding technique in such cases. We love you from Dubai, Dr. Ahmad Salam. Hi. <laughs> I love you too, my Arab friends. I love my Arab friends. What is the best crown type, for example, or ceramic or zirconia, or you do still make PFM? Uh, Farzan, no, I'm not doing PFM, and personally, I don't do a lot of zirconia crowns, to be honest. Personally, I prefer to uh, utilize for crowns, Emacs material, lithium desilicate crowns. This is my favorite, because I can bond it, actually, that's why, that's why. I want to come to your BG Dental Center, one of my biggest dreams. Merry Ramadan. I wish you in New Year 
to fulfill your dreams and all your dreams to come true. This is my wish. <laughs> always welcome, always welcome. Our dollars are always open to our friends and colleagues. And actually we are moving to a new training center. Uh, from January, uh, we will have a new training center in the very city center of Kiev, in a nice place, very attractive, amazing place, so welcome. You can find the information about our courses. You can uh, find this information on our web page, which is, uh, which is, I will just write down in the comments. I'm writing down the uh, the web page of our training center. So go there, and you have everything you want there, all programs you want, except orthodontics, and except also implants. Okay, perfect. Uh, Ahmad, salam. Yesterday you speak Russian. I didn't understand anything. I only know bad words and vodka from Russia. Yeah, actually, uh, we always learn bad words first. For, sure, for, for example, me. When I started to learn some Arabic expressions, the first things that I learned in Arabic was bad words. <laughs> Were bad words. What is the best cementation technique? Glacionomer based Penavia or real AX when cementing lithium desilicate crown. When you cement lithium desilicate crown or any other glass ceramic crowns, the best choice is to use resin cement, not glass enamel, okay? Resin-based cements. If you can light cure, I prefer to use light curable version of, uh, of cements. Basically, I'm using a highly filled composite material to cement my veneers, overlays, and crowns as well. Uh, so, resin-based, pure resin-based cement, okay? This is important, not glassing anymore, for Emacs. Rack, which magnification do you recommend for students? How quickly should we transition to higher magnification or microscope? as fast as you can okay as fast as you can starting working with microscope as easier it will be for you in future so uh, if you have possibility now to work with microscope just straight just go straight no doubts go and work with microscope okay or if you don't have possibility now to work with microscope, for sure you have to work with loops because magnification in dentistry is not a, something like a future. It's not something like um, space technology. Magnification helps you to see better. As best you can see, as best you can do. This is the thing, okay? So go straight to the magnification. Just no fear, no discussion, straight. Okay, what happens if you put condensation putty on addition light during taking impression? Mm, what happens if you put condensation putty on addition light during taking impression? I don't understand this language. Uh, I don't understand this question, sorry. Can you just rephrase it? Um, yeah, Panavia too is resin, so you use you can use Panavia, no problem. Which magnification do you recommend? I answer this question, okay? I have seen you mentioned at times in videos, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you state at times you don't light cure the adhesive. I'm wondering why is this? Thank you, Gustavo. Yes, I'm not light curing adhesive when I cement <clears throat> when I'm cementing crowns or inlays or veneers, I'm not light curing adhesive. The reason why is that uh, we use a really thin spacer. So the fit of restoration is really, really, really precise. And uh, if actually you use uh, non-filled adhesive, you can dry it so it will become super thin, then you can light cure. But person, I'm using Optibon Eiffel, which is pretty thick. And if I'm light curing this Optibon Eiffel, it may change fit of my restoration. So this is the this is this that's why. So I'm not light curing adhesive because 
The spacer is thin and precision of fit is really high and I don't want to compromise fit of restoration by light cured adhesive frame. That's it. Can I cement all zirconic round to a cast metal post using, for example, catac? Yes, you can. You can use glassy on them to cement zirconic rounds. You can. Okay, uh, great. Another question. I'm from Italy, as does. Hello, from Ukraine. Which place you suggest to go in Europe to learn the best of the best and the dontics with practice with patience? Really, I don't know where you can learn uh, these techniques to practice with patience. You have maybe in some universities like postgraduate programs, maybe. I'm not sure, but I think there is some problems. There are some programs in universities that can let you work with, uh, with patients. Um, Farzan, Katak is glass ionomer, I know, and uh, you can use glass ionomer to cement zirconia, but not glass ceramic restorations. If you cement glass ceramic restorations like Emax, lace seed ceramic or feldspatic ceramic, it is contraindicated to use glass ionomer for that cases. When you cement zirconia, you can use glass ionomer. Okay, good. Uh, Crown Bridge Veneers, what do you think about equi gingival finish line? Some dentists recommend it, but sub gingival is less hygienic and more aesthetic. What is your opinion? Um, where to place finish line? Ahmed Salam. Three options supra gingival, gingival level, intracrevicular. Three options are correct, three options are good. Everything depends on case. When you have high aesthetic case with high smile line, when patient talks, when patient smiles, you can see gum, and you change the color of patient's teeth by utilizing white veneers, for example, or crowns, in this case, you have to localize your finish line in sulcus, okay? It's not subgingival, it is in sulcus, because, well, it, it's, it is not affecting biological width, but in such a case, you still can mask transition. If you have patient with low smile line, uh, patient cannot show your gum area when smiling, when uh, laughing, when uh, talking, etc. In such a case, if you change patient's teeth color, I prefer to keep my finish line at the level of the gum, okay? And if I'm working in non-aesthetic areas, from lingual side, when we do crown, for example, or in posterior teeth. And uh, we have also patient with a low smile line and we are not changing color or changing just one or two shades maximum. In such a cases, I do my finish line supra gingival. So this is the thing, okay? Best way to remove excess cement, super floss, tap curing, matrix band around the tooth, Yes, Rack, all mentioned, you can use as combination. We actually, we combine many techniques. I use my brush to remove as much cement before light curing as possible. Then I light cure it from palatal side. Then I do tap cure from buckle side. And I remove it with a scalpel blade or with a curet, etc. By the way, we have a really cool online masterclass about cementation and uh, removal of the cement. You can go to our webpage to webinar folder and there is a webinar about veneer cementation step by step uh, where we were discussing step by step bonding procedure and we showed step by step process of cementation with all this excess removal. Um, in this new year holidays you may watch this webinar and uh, you will get a lot of useful information. Step by step protocolized information. Okay, which type of composite you use? Uh, I can use any composite, to be honest, really. I'm not stick to any company. All modern composites, they are good, okay? I use, in, in most of my cases, I'm using uh, 3M Filtech Ultimate and I'm using from Densply uh, Ceramics Duo. This is what I'm using. But anyways, just um, personal preference, okay? Uh, do you mind repeating the name of the dentist you recommended about composite restoration? Didn't get a chance to write it down. Didier Dici. His name is Didier Dici. 
thank you for information. Very informative. Farzan, my pleasure. What is your opinion? Apple dentistry. Nice. What is your opinion about double cord impression technique? Apple dentistry. Are you from Barcelona or not? Just, just curious because I was in Barcelona last year and I saw the logo, uh, the, the logo Apple dentistry in, in Barcelona. Is it you or not? Uh, so anyways, what is your opinion about double cord impression technique? It makes sense. If you have your preparation inside the sulcus, which is intracruvicular preparation, and you want to get precise impression, in such a case, a double cord technique makes sense. But if you have your preparations supra-gingival or gingival level, no need for, uh, for double cord technique, actually. To keep it simple. Keep it simple. Perfect. So, I think we actually done with these questions. Apple Dentistry didn't reply. I think it's it should be Barcelona because I saw, I saw, ah, you are from Egypt. Okay, you are from Egypt. I saw Apple Dentistry in Barcelona and I was about to take selfie in front of the front door. Anyways, uh, the last question and then uh, we will go sleep. Farzan, uh, what is the best impression technique, digital or analog? Mm, the best technique is the one that you can use in best way. Uh, in other words, the best technique is the one that, that works in your hands. This is the answer. Both works, digital works analog works. To understand how to do digital, you have to understand how to do analog first. Okay? And uh, that's it. This is just technique, this is just technology that we use in our, our, our daily life, dental life. So it's up to you. Learn both. But first you have to understand how to do perfect um, analog techniques. This is important. Okay, um, perfect. So, Michael Kuzmich, I am the biggest of your fan. Thank you very much, really. Pleasure to hear. What to do when the teeth have too tight contact that I cannot floss the rubber dam through and I don't want to use split dam? Uh, put some, li some lubricant between teeth with floss before placing it with the rubber dam. And then you go with rubinem, will be easier. Another trick, another trick, uh, you can take a um, flat plastic instrument before placing rubinem just to, to deattach teeth, just to get a little bit space between and then you go with rubinem. So you have to use, to ask your assistant to help you with that because you cannot do, you cannot do it alone. Uh, where can you learn digital smile design? Rack, module three, Belgrade Dental Academy, welcome. All about veneers and digital smile design is just a part of the program. Um, would you use Serac? I'm, I'm actually using, I use Serac. Serac is a really good platform, super platform, really nice. Do you advise res resin table top on teeth with endodontic treatment? Actually, personally, I don't like to use composite materials over endodontically treated teeth, but it depends how big was the defect, okay? If you have ninja access and small defects, you can do anything you want. But if tooth was broken and MOD, for example, with thin walls, ceramic material is more, um, more uh, predictable in such a cases. Uh, big fan, Gustavo, my friend from Colombia. May the dentist force be with us. <laughs> exactly. May the dental force be with you. Keep it up. Great work. Awesome and fun. Thank you very much. And we really appreciate your kind feedbacks. And also we really appreciate when you put likes. Because we are now 28 people and only 5 likes. It's really something really crazy. Maybe you are, la you are lazy to do this. I'm not really sure that you are shy to put likes, but maybe you are lazy. But you know what happens? When you put like on YouTube, YouTube st start to boost uh, our information. Why it is important? For us it is important because many people, we will have more followers. This is, let me be clear with you. But also what it, why it is important for dental community, because 
The content that we post on our YouTube channel is pretty informative, high quality, I can say, and it is free of charge, okay? Also, now, because of you, since you start to interact with us, since you start to comment our dental cases, giving really useful information, now we create, all of us, we actually, we created a community, a platform where we exchanging experience from different countries, from different cities, free of charge with no limits. So when you put like, what happens? Fa if not fa Facebook also, a YouTube start to share this content to many people. So many dentists will come to us and uh, that is like exchanging of energy, okay? It's good to ch exchange information, to share information. As more you share, as more you get. This is, this is axiom of the life. So as many people will see that, as many more edu educated people will be, more quality of treatment will be, more happy patient will be. So you see the big circle of good things just by simple putting like on uh, our YouTube videos. Perfect. Uh, okay. And let me just see what happens. We're, what is the minimal root length to restore with post and core and when to extract? Uh, this is a difficult question because there is no strict indication, but I can answer you. If you use fiber post, for example, the length of the fiber post has to be equal to the length of the coronal part. No need to make it long. I mean, the, the, the intra... Um, intra canal part it, it shouldn't be that long so this is what i can say you okay so perfect uh maria sidorak i'm too thanks for enormously beneficial in force thank you very much thank you really when you comment and give us kind and warm feedbacks it makes us to be more motivated to do more and more. So thanks a lot. And thanks for cont contribution, by the way. Uh, did you like Rise of Skywalker? Skywalk, uh, Skywalker. Rob, I didn't, I didn't watch this video uh, yet, so don't uh, tell me anything. I'm planning to go a little bit later, okay? I will, I will. Can we get five US dollars for each like. You can pay me five US dollars for the videos that I share with you free of charge. Don't play. <laughs> earn money. Don't ask for the money, okay? You have to earn. You have to earn yourself. There is nobody who will give you money. Nobody. Ahmed Salam, ah, my friend. How did you grow your Instagram? Just post valuable, interesting, interactive, and useful content. content. There is no magic under Instagram growth, Facebook growth, YouTube growth, okay? The content that you post has to be really interesting and perfect. And also you have to define a very specifically audience that you would like to grow. In other words, for whom you are doing your Instagram account, for patients or for colleagues, for example, or for your friends, okay? If for patients, it should be uh, one kind of, of content, for colleagues, another type of content, for friends, another type of content, but content has to be interesting and useful. That's it, okay? So it will go, it will go. So perfect. I am joking, but I truly respect you when you showed Endo fucked up video. A true dentist shows both his success and failures. Ahmad, my friend, I will show you more. <laughs> perfect. Mikhail decided to ask me question in Russian. In this case, I'm not resp I'm responding in Russian or Ukrainian because these dental talks completely English speaking, so yesterday was Russian speaking. No Russian today, only English. Yes, correct. Watching you from Chicago, 
Hello from Kiev. By the way, we have three people, three dentists came from Chicago this year to our dental center. Three dentists from Chicago. Okay, perfect. No spoilers, spoilers, correct. How do you diagnose pulp status and prevent pulp death during crown prep? The vitality test, just cold test, and when we prep for crowns or for veneers or for inlays, that doesn't matter. There are a lot of water, water coolant, and don't force. Okay, and don't force. This is the this is the answer. Who are my mentors? Didier Dici, Pascal Manier, Christian Kochman, Florin Kofar, Jason Smithson, uh, my God, uh, Cliff Rado, Arnaldo Castellucci. Douglas Terry, Rudolf Slavicek, and many, many others, Peter Dawson, uh, Kois, Frank Spear, many people that I'm really uh, crazy about, the level of the dentistry, the knowledge that they share, and helping me to grow. Okay, my friends, was really nice to talk to you, to spend almost one hour with you, with that dental talks, I think that we will do a, a tradition, maybe once a month, we will do these dental talks. Uh, during these dental talks, we will uh, define winners because we are actually, uh, we are going to continue with the BG Dental Cases series. If you don't mind, if you want us more, just say yes right now in the comments. We want more and I will see. And then we will do more and more and more dental cases. During these dental cases, we will do contests, so you will be able to win prizes like uh, online masterclasses that we have, okay? And every single month, we will define winners, and also every single month, maybe, we will do these dental talks so we can uh, discuss some topics with you. You can ask me questions, I will reply these questions, so there will be interactive communications between communication between you and between me so yeah uh, it will be in english and it will be also in uh, in russian as well but it will be separate not simultaneously together that will be separate english version russian version the same as we have in in a dental uh, in a dental cases so don't forget forget to follow us don't forget to put likes okay don't forget to comment to send to share information good information and uh, we will put a link here. Uh, actually, we, are not, we will not put a link here. You just go to our main page of um, YouTube, playlists, okay? In these playlists, you will be able to see BG Dental Cases in English and One Minute Dental Series in English. Because I know that in many countries you will have now uh, Christmas holidays and you have some time to... Uh, learn some dentistry from crazy Ukrainian dentist. Was really happy to see you, to communicate to you, and may the dental force be with you. Bye-bye. Keep in touch.